Whenever I have my own mess ups, mistakes, or issues during my own live streams, I try to turn it into educational opportunities for you, the viewer. Uh, that is my job after all. Well, in the most recent episode of Streamer News, which has just got done streaming, I had a, the second half of the stream was plagued with these weird frame drop issues where I had render lag kicking up once every minute or so and the background that I had rotating was stuttering and it was weird because I just spent a whole behind the scenes vlog trying to make sure my face cam here was moving nice and smoothly and I wasn't dropping frames there anymore. Well, I figured out why and it's actually due to a kind of you know less looked at and mostly ignored optimization that you can make that even I myself tend to ignore. So I want to show you that right now. This is specifically related to media sources. Now media sources are videos for overlays and things like that that you can use. So for example, I have this scene wherever it went. This is a just chatting scene that I use. I have a media source that is my webcam frame. So it has a little animated frame going around my face here. And then I've got a rotating background in the background that is also its own media source running pretty smooth if i leave this here it should stay fine no issues now another media source for example could be an ad spot so for example i'll play my usual in video or in stream tube buddy ad my videos for any length of time you've probably heard about two there was a frame drop when the transition happened but otherwise it was going smoothly well during that stream i went to go play my usual streamer news ad which is for owned at eposvox.gg own3d and the original file for it that I usually send it was missing. Usually I have a little compressed copy that I end up playing and it was somehow not in the place that it was last. And so quickly to get the ad playing on stream, I found the closest copy I could, which was in an uncompressed DNX HR format, which is very intensive to play back, especially since it was rendered in 4K 60 FPS. OBS did not like that format. It started stuttering. The audio was glitching. Things like that you're not supposed to play those beefy files through obs well instead of you know letting it play out i just quickly switched scenes and assumed that the you know the stream would be fine and that is where the render lag issues really kicked up and started plaguing the stream and that is because i left something unchecked something very obvious something very newbie and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so here in my sources list and my scenes list, I have a lot of different scenes. I have a lot of different sources I'm juggling, which makes finding these kinds of problems really freaking obnoxious. But one media source is this TubeBuddy ad spot, which is just a video that plays. I have it set not to loop and I have it set to show nothing when playback ends. But one box that I did not check because I assumed it would cause problems, but apparently having it checked was the solution, is close file when inactive. Now what this does is make sure that, well actually it says right here, Closes the file when the source is not being displayed on the stream or recording. This allows the file to be changed when the source isn't active, but there may be some startup delay when the source reactivates. So, you know, that mostly explains it, but my thinking was, okay, if I switch to the scene, I don't want some awkward like pause point when it is loading up the video for the first time. So for the most part, I've always kept this unchecked. However, you can also enable hardware decoding. That was enabled on the first one. If you check it, that means when you do switch scenes, it's no longer loaded up into memory. It's no longer being accessed or tried to be rendered to some degree and thus will not cause a problem. So by loading up that file on the media source, it was causing a bunch of render lag. And then simply by switching scenes to another scene, it was still doing all of that damage in the background. So just a little bit of an optimization tip, something small here for OBS that a lot of people ignore that I myself have not covered enough. Just wanted to share it with you. If you're having render lag and have a lot of media sources, that is one such option you can try. Like I said, I just like sharing my mistakes with you. So let me know if you enjoyed it. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education and OBS videos. I am, you know, a streaming guy at this point. Subscribe on Floatplane for early access to videos, behind the scenes content. Go check out that streamer news episode if you want to hear about some cool streamer news. And I'll see you next time.